So time to talk more boxing here on uh, Highland Sports. And this week, I'm delighted to say we've got Jason Quigley join us. Jason, how are you? Not too bad, Ashin. How's the farm, lad? I'm not too bad. You're an excited man, so you are. I'm sure you're getting back into the ring on, on May 29th. You've waited a long time for this. Was it 16 months, is it? 17 months since your last fight? And yeah. you're, uh, I'm sure you're eager to get back at it. Yeah, without a doubt, Ashin. You know, this is... Uh... This is what I do, you know, and I haven't been able to do it for a long time. But uh, we can uh, understand the situation that the world has been in. It's not just something that has happened me or that has happened Ireland or the county. You know, this is something that the whole world has been through. So um, that made it a wee bit easier to take. But uh, enough's enough now. I'm ready to get back in the ring and get back doing what I love to do. Yeah, a lot of media this week, Jason, are, uh, around the fight, and it was interesting uh, to hear Andy Lee saying that this is a this is a second career for you. Does it feel like that? Does it? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, this is uh, just I just feel as if I'm a I'm a much more matured uh, person now inside and outside of boxing in terms of the way that I look at the sport, the way that um, I look at fights, the way that I approach fights, the way that I am in the actual ring as well, being more present, being more mindful in there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting time for me. There's, you know, there's a lot of fighters come away and say, this is the new version of me. Like, this isn't a new version of me. This is just uh, a tweaked version of me with a few, uh, a few small changes mentally, uh, a few small changes uh, technique-wise and physically. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited and really looking forward to it now come uh, May 29th. How long did it take yourself and, and Andy Lee to, to figure out what was actually needed to, to be tweaked, Jason, to, to bring you on and become an improved version of yourself? Well, Andy's a very, you know, he's a very knowledgeable, has a massive IQ in boxing. And, you know, Andy would have seen stuff right away that he would have seen just, when he wasn't even my coach, you know, as, as a fighter watching the fights. And then obviously as we as we work together in the gym, the more sessions that we've done, the more we've got to tweak on things, make things better. And, and it's not been like, you know, you're not going to see Jesus Quigley's a completely different fighter. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's just small changes that is going to improve my game, improve my performances. And uh, yeah, like it's, it was a matter of, you know, just the whole time that I've been with Andy, it has like it didn't just end up being two months of training and being like, right, that's it, we have it. You know, it was a matter of weeks and months and a year going to now to, you know, nearly two years working together. And every session that we do, we're improving, we're working on things and we're, we're trying to be that 1% better every day. Yeah. I know speaking to you previously when you when you entered the professional ranks that you were comfortable uh, with the step up into the pro ranks and just to be fair there probably was a lot of expectation on you then yes you have suffered your first defeat since then and, and you lost that North American uh, belt that, that you had but do you feel more sort of comfortable in this environment now since you've joined up with Andy? Yeah like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in an environment now that's that worked for me whenever I was an amateur as well. I trained in Dublin with Irish High Performance Team. I was able to go home most weekends. I was really enjoying what I was doing. And that's the type of person that I am. I'm I'm not a I'm not a person that needs to go away into training camp to to stay away from partying and drinking and eating bad foods. You know, I live a pretty clean life outside of boxing as it is. And I'm a very disciplined, hard worker, focused determined on becoming the best that I can in a way so you know that has worked perfect for me and uh, the relationship that I have with Andy like it's 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 just a matter of four or five different things all coming together like you can't just turn around and pick one thing and say that's what the change was there's a mixture of uh, four or five different things that have all blended together and uh made this uh made this a very very good uh situation now that i'm in yeah you had an interesting training camp as well didn't you for a couple of weeks you were you were over at tyson fury's gym and you were along with joseph parker who was fighting there was prepping for the jazora fight so 
what was that like and what did you take out of it jason it's 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 been great you know it, it really has you know joseph has recently joined the stable now with uh andy and he's been a an unbelievable addition you know joseph is a big big massive heavyweight from new zealand but an absolute gentleman so he is and uh, me and joseph hit it off right away and you know definitely think that this friendship between me and joseph is going to go way beyond boxing as well and you know it's, it's great to be he was a former world champion like he's been to the top and he is a former world champion he's been to the top like i'm surrounding myself with people that have been where i want to get to and uh you know that's that's what you have to do in life you have to surround yourself with uh, good positive people that can help you get to where you want to get to and that uh, can can uh, can assist you in that uh in that process as well and that's exactly the the camp that i have around me and i'm absolutely delighted with it next up you is of course uh in las vegas shane mosley jr um this fight has been seen as an important fight for both of you guys if you are going to continue to move on up the, up the ladder in, in your career is that a fair enough assessment is it jason yeah, of course. You know, every fight uh, as a professional fighter is is a very important fight. Um, you know, you can't really afford any backward steps in boxing because it's not really just one backward step. It can knock you back a few. It's hard to get back into the positions that you were in again. So, you know, every fight is a is a massive fight, and this one now, especially for me, you know, I'm really excited for it. It's a it's on a massive stage, the MJ or the Mandalay Bay. Uh, Las Vegas on a massive card, two world title fights on the card. Then I'm the next fight on for that for the the WBO version of the middleweight title. You know, so this is uh this is a very exciting fight. Really looking forward to it. And uh, yes, it's a very important one also. Yeah, how do you how do you keep yourself grounded? Because at times the big lights of Vegas can be be a distraction for for a sportsman who who goes to that sort of area of of uh, of America, which is huge for sports uh, and particularly a boxer, Jason. Well, that's one thing that I was very lucky uh, to have come across all this in my uh, professional career already. You know, I've had my pro debut in the MGM Grand on the Canelo Lara World Title fight. Uh, I've had all the media workouts, the press conferences, the grand arrivals and limousines. I have been through it all. Um, I know what to expect. And these are things that I have turned around and says that whenever my time comes and whenever the big, massive bright lights are on me, this is where I'm going to be able to walk in cool, calm, collected with a tunnel vision, my mind on the game and not get distracted by everything that's going on around me. And this is exactly now the position that I'm in. And it's up to me now to use that experience that I've had throughout my career and put it all into play now come uh, come fight week. What are you expecting from Shane Mosley Jr. to bring to the to the ring, Jason? You're going to fight or he? Look, to, to be honest, look, uh, Shane's a, he's a great fighter. He comes from a very good pedigree, as, as anybody that knows boxing knows his father was an absolute legend of the sport. But, um, you know, Shane is a great fighter. But, you know, to be honest, I, I have watched some videotapes. I have looked at what he's good at. I have looked at what he's not good at. How can I exploit him? How can I counteract what he is good at? And, you know, I have done my homework on him. And it's time now to just start concentrating on myself, getting in there, being the best version of me, doing what I want to do, and doing my game plan to 110 percent and uh let him worry about what i have to take to the table yeah you uh, you sparred with him before didn't you i did yeah um probably five six years ago whenever i was first over in la i sparred him and his father all in the one day and uh look to be honest i can't really remember sparring him because i was that focused on sparring the father and uh, i really enjoyed it and it was a great experience and you know me and Shane kept in touch for a while after it and obviously I moved back home and everything I got there and you know boxing is a gentleman sport and there's there's not too many times you'll get real idiots or real disrespectful fighters there there's obviously a couple in the sport but you know there's a lot of respect between fighters but come fight night that'll all be pushed to the one side we'll be getting in there taking care of business and then we can uh 
shake hands in after it and have an old chat about that spire to see if we remember much. <laughs> Jason, you don't seem at all under any sort of pressure going under this one by, by the way you're talking. Look, I mean, I know, I know the stage I'm at in my career. I know what this means to me. I know what I have to do whenever I get into the ring. And I think that's probably one of the best things that I've that has ever happened to me in my career is, you know, really zoning in and focusing on me, not what everyone else is saying, not all the comments from everyone else, positive and negative. And that was something that probably got to me a little bit before the whole fact of when's Jason Quigley going to become world champion. It was a matter of when, not hopefully he will, or geez, be great to see Quigley go and become a world champion. It was when. And I kind of got into that bubble of, it was like a race, like, geez, I better hurry up now and become a world champion. Whereas now, not that I don't care what people say, but, you know, I'm more concentrated on myself. I'm more tunnel vision. I'm more um, focused on becoming the best version I can possibly be and just concentrating on that. And once I've started to do that, you know, through the pressure has been coming off. I have been a lot more relaxed. I've been a lot more calm, cool, collected because I know everything I'm doing is 110%. And, you know, I'm going to get in there and give it my absolute all. And uh, my plan is to become away a champion that night and push on to even bigger and better things. Yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk like that, Jason, because in the middle of everything, Golden Boy decided to throw what could have been a possible world title shot in the mix when, when, they, when they mentioned Canelo. So what you're doing is you're getting used to your new self and and uh, focusing in on yourself. And obviously world championships again has, uh, has been mentioned. So it's sort of swaying back and forth all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. Look, in life, we all go through highs and lows and I think the key thing is not to not to live too long in your highs and not to live too long in your lows, you know, just kind of be grounded in everything that you do. Take everything at a day at a time because there's a great saying from Brendan Engel, be nice to everyone on your way up because you're going to meet them on the way back down. It's a, it's a circle of life, you know what I mean? And that's just the way that the things roll. Um, you have to... You have to keep yourself at a at a balance, you know, not to not to get too hyped up and all the happy great things because life or your career or your sport or whatever it is you do isn't always going to be hitting the absolute highs and isn't always going to be happy. But you know, if you can if you can keep yourself at a at a certain level and at a certain um, emotion throughout your things, not get too excited, not get too upset. Um, I think that for me, in a way, that's what um, I find the most happiness and the most uh, contentness at. But there's an end game as well, isn't there, Jason? That you, you have to dream of it too, don't you? And I talked to you before about Purple G was a man that, that you would like to get in the in the ring with and possibly take a strap off at some stage in, in your career if that was to ever happen. Yeah, like without a doubt, you know, these are all things that I have uh, in my in my goals in my ambitions in my career like you know what i have set out for myself but you know i can't live on waiting for a ggg fight or waiting for a canelo fight like there's so much excuse, like there's so much shit that can happen excuse my language like between things that you just have to kind of concentrate on on, on yourself and concentrate on getting up every day being the best version that you can be giving it your absolute all and letting everything else fall into place for you because you know we can chase the triple g fight we can chase the canelo fight but who's to turn around and say we'll put everything into that basket and it might end up canelo gets injured i get injured things don't work out the way that they're supposed to work out but you know if you keep being the best that you possibly can be keep working towards everything that that you want in your life, then things will start coming to you a lot, uh, a lot smoother, a lot better. And without that, um, without that perception of always waiting on it or expecting it to happen and being like, oh, if this happens, this is going to be brilliant. This is going to be great. Be brilliant. Be great now in the moment that you're in. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, you be great against uh, Shane Mosley Jr. on the 29th. Of plan, and, and, we'll, and we'll take it from there, Jason Quigley. Listen, as always, it's uh, it's good to talk to you. And uh, you could get a, a strap as well, could you? There's a belting offer, uh, yeah, an NABO uh, middleweight title. So it's not yeah, bad walking down the strip in Las Vegas with a, a belt around your shoulder. I'm not going to take any belts with me for my trousers because whenever I'm walking down the strip, I'm going to need that belt and keep them up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good man, Jason. Listen, the best of luck in the next one. We'll talk to you take soon. Easy. Thanks for having me. I'll see you. Cheers. No